Well, like Nick said, I'm Alex. Um, I work for Object Partners. And I'm talking about controller as syntax and why you should be using it. Uh, real quick, who, obviously, you, we're all Angular people here, right? I mean, that's what this meetup's about. Who uses controller as already? Show of hands. Half, maybe? A third? OK. I was hoping that everybody would know this, and then I could just like not talk, and <laughs> we can call it good. But uh, essentially, what we'll cover, uh, conceptual difference of controller as syntax, um, how that has uh, impacts on directive and route definitions, um, why we should use it, and for me, a couple gotchas uh, that took me some time to figure out. So the classic controller syntax, uh, this is pre-Angular 1.2, is when it was official. Um, we were basically dependent upon scope for all of our view interactions. So any sort of bindings or function references from, from the HTML, we had to do it through scope. So our controllers didn't look much like a controller without scope everywhere, right? <coughs> so taking the most basic example here, um, you know, ng controller, we've got our binding name that we're setting to be ng Nebraska, and this is not going to blow anybody's mind, but we've got a bunch of plunkers, so we might as well start it off that way. So it works, right? Hello, ng Nebraska. That's what we've got. So what's the point of controller as? Uh, basically, it's to break up with scope. Like, it's been real, but you are way too involved in my code base, like, dependent upon you so much. Uh, so if it's just JavaScript, right, why doesn't Angular look more like it? <coughs> so this is essentially just a side-by-side -side of what we've got for a JavaScript class and what a controller as con controller would look like. Right? So it's, we've got essentially the same kind of concept going on. Um, if we're doing our initialization of a class, then that provides us you know, access to all of the properties and, and functions inside of that class. Um, same thing is going on with controller as now. So basically, we're kind of getting back to the nitty gritty, uh, just JavaScript. So we can think about this as controllers is, is instantiating a class as whatever you put that name in the controller as configuration. Uh, so this changes that example just slightly, right? So we've got introduction of as and then what we want our controller as name to be. Um, but basically, right, we've got uh, main as our controller name. So everything now that we want to hang off that controller is going to have, that controller scope is going to have to have main prefixed in it. So um, the big change here, right, is we've got something missing, and it's scope. Uh, so instead, we're using everything off of the this variable, which essentially when you declare a controller as a uh, controller, everything that you build off of, of that, when it gets instance up, it gets set onto scope as that controller name. So we have right controller as main. So it's going to take everything that's on this or self here, which will explain why we're doing self. But um, it's going to take all of those properties and functions and attach them onto scope dot whatever your name of the controller has been declared as. So that's why we hang everything off of that main prefix namespace. <coughs> uh, the reason why we use self here, uh, because we could just use this, right, and just have references to this going all around. But what we want to do is we want to save off um, basically the context of this at that time so that inside of any other uh, code inside that controller, we know we're referencing this as the controller, not this inside of some other context that we're currently working within. So again, Lunker, right? So nothing really has changed too much, just showing that it still works. So how this changes custom directives. Uh, this is kind of where it gets interesting. So the controller as property. Wow, you mean we just do it controller as, and then you put the name there. Uh, I think you can also do whatever the controller is, and then just as, like we had in the uh, HTML, right, controller as main. You can do hot coffee controller as coffee if you want. Um, I always like to have just the controller as property proper there as well. So <coughs> uh, this is basically as Angular 1.2 when controller as was introduced. This is what this looks like. And we'll get into 
something here. So it's a bit wonky, right? Because we're forced to make a decision now, because we have this prefix name of coffee everywhere. Um, and we have something kind of weird in our code that we're going to have to do if we're going to make sure that we're still referencing that controller as name. So we have our directive here, uh, hot coffee. Basically, we're bringing in a couple of different isolate scope properties. Yeah, I did not think about the zooming. Um, so <coughs> essentially what we have, right, is we're passing in uh, some isolate scope properties here. Um, everything that is happening in this template is got that coffee name prefixed. Um, so basically the, the weirdness, the decision is uh, we have to make a compromise. Either we want to keep consistency in our template, which means that everything, you know, our bindings are all prefixed with that controller as name, or we have to uh, have a weirdness of, sorry, if basically we have a linking function here that um, we take the scope that we have taken in from our isolate scope, and we're going to have to extend that onto our controller as deal. This is just at the state of uh, Angular 1, 2, is just kind of a quirk that came into play. And, and since forth, they've brought in a couple of their properties to make this easier. But basically, you know, you have to have a weird linking function that just feels dirty outright, or we have to reference different objects in our controller um, templates, or our directive templates, excuse me. So <coughs> essentially, the point of this one, we'll see this one over and over again here. But when we click Make Hot Coffee, it takes the number of bean scoops and tells you how many cups of coffee that it makes. So move on from that. Right, so it felt you have that weirdness of either a linking function that feels dirty or inconsistent in your, in your templates there. Um, so now Angular 1.3 <coughs> comes about, and they're like, this is silly. Right, let's just do something else to, to directives here. So this is where the bind to controller property comes into play. Uh, and this essentially takes care of that linking function for you. It will take your scope properties and bind them to your controller as you bring them in. So you don't have to do that handoff from just scope to underneath the namespace of your controller as scope. So things become a little bit easier. Instead of having that linking function or having you know, two different kind of namespaces in your, your template, we now just have another property on our directive definition that we say bind a controller true. And so now this feels cleaner. I'm happier with it, right? I don't have any kind of boilerplate code that I have to do every time I want to do um, a directive. So just to make sure it works. Cool. So that was all good and great. But now uh, we're in Angular 1.4 land. So <coughs> this is where they took bind a controller and they said, this is silly. We have scope that we're basically taking all the stuff we define in the scope and we're putting it as bind a controller. So let's just do that, right? Let, let's just take our JavaScript object declaration for how we do isolate scopes. And let's bring that down to bind a controller to where <coughs> it's more explicit about what's happening here, right? Because all you're saying here is, what you pass into this directive, the beans, the temp, the brew, all of these things are just going to get put onto coffee dot, um, you know, beans, coffee dot temp, coffee dot brew. Um, so this has a couple of cool little quirks that come into play. So this makes, if you've got really simple directives, right, where you've got like a template that is very basic that you can have, uh, let's say, you know, just you're binding in, uh, I don't know, you have a div, and inside that div, you're just showing whatever you pass in, right? It'd be a binding of, say, coffee.temp, right? And you just show the temp. That's the directive's template. You wouldn't have to necessarily um, do anything. Why don't we just do this in code instead of talking? So it becomes easier because basically you can just reference in your coffee and then whatever your your controller as binding is going to be within your template and not really have to do have any controller to actually like reference it like an actual one or like the, the linking function there to, to hand this off. Um, basically what this does right is it just makes scope to true and now we move all the isolate scope declaration down to binding controller. Um, and this will still work. <coughs> 
Oops. So that's all well and good. Do you have to declare yourself true? Uh, I think it has to be a truthy value. So whatever you want, you can do just the it's open. It's got to form an isolated scope. Yes. Yes. Um, also, feel free to interrupt with any questions. I don't mean to like barge through. This is very open and informal. But thank you. Good question. Do you know does bind controller happen post link or pre link? Uh, no, actually, I don't. I would assume it'd be post. But I don't want to put my foot in my mouth too much here. Then you could pass not. You could still want to bring bind to scope and bind to the controller. To controller. Because if you wanted something with a pre link function, you may need it. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so I actually, uh, full disclosure, I really haven't used binary controller like this much. The project I'm on is still in Angular 3, and so this isn't something that's available for me. Um, so all I've got is that binary controller true. <laughs> that's all I've been able to work with much. So this is a little bit of fun, getting ahead of where I'm, I'm living. So uh, right, we looked at how custom directives change a bit right, with different stuff. This is simple, right? UI router definitions, uh, first off, if you're not using UI router, just stop. You should. Like, go check out Mike Kelly's talk on the previous NG Nebraska. Um, I've got a link for it here, and I'll, I'll put these slides out as, as well. Um, but basically, the only change is, right, it's really simple. We just have our controller as, as cup. And so this is what I was talking about as well, too. Our templates can be, you don't have to have an external template or something, right? It can become really simple with just having your namespace there, and it's pretty obvious what's going on. So. Um, but I'm not going to dive into UI router or anything, so go check out Mike's talk on that. Uh, so the benefits, right? Why we should be using it. <coughs> uh, explicitly specific bindings in the, in the template, right? So here's a case where I don't know why you'd ever be doing this, but uh, doing all of these nested controllers, um, and they all have a property on them that we're, we're calling type, right? So it <coughs> becomes really obvious which one we're actually like trying to reference here, which property scope we're getting at, or which controller scope we're getting at, because you have that prefixed with you know, hot coffee, et cetera. So here, when I look at the code, is that still able to be seen? So <coughs> right. We've got these all out in order. So this is just coffee. That's just the coffee one. We've got hot coffee, just coffee, cold coffee. And it maintains the reference to, you don't have to like throw around all these dollar parents and like all the dollar parent, dollar parent, if you're trying to reference controller way up, which you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. But um, basically, it just becomes really clear which controller you're accessing properties on to, for your bindings. So um, that's definitely a plus. So how does it work then if like one of your subviews is in a different file? Like if you've got a nested controller, you know, you've got one inside the other, but they're defined in separate files, and you wanted to reference the parent, are you still using this name or is it back on scope? You would still be using that that name as long as that scope that you're trying to access, that higher controller scope, is a child of it. Right. right? Okay. So yeah. Yep, so really, like if this was the case, right, these wouldn't all be in the same HTML file. They'd be, you know, in different files. And when the page is fully rendered, right, you'd have your nesting of controllers. Um, and this is like for some reason you wanted to get at some property that happens way up here, right, but you don't have to pass it all the way through or I don't know what the use case really would be. Um, but you wouldn't have to reference any parents, which is bad, because then you're dependent upon, right, the chain of controllers and how many layers of them are above. Um, so this just kind of cuts out all that crap and gets right to it. So <coughs> um, this is honestly the biggest reasons for me. Uh, eliminates the need for the dot rule. So uh, are we all familiar with the dot rule? Why we use it or why we used it, I should say, because now we don't have to with controller as. Um, so this is important stuff, guys. Uh, this is just a byproduct of inheritance. So this is the basic, most basic, basic example we've got here, right? 
So uh, this coffee is just coffee. And what we have here, if we notice, right, we've got just um, a pairing of p tags and inputs in this nested controller that we looked at before in the previous example. So right, inheritance says, right, type is going to propagate down to down here. So as we type in the, the most parent uh, controller here, it keeps it, right? Whatever that value is. But as soon as we change that value in a child, that binding, the two-way binding there is broken. So now, right, this is hot, this is cold. So when you're up here, you'd think that changing that parent property that gets passed all the way down would actually still propagate. But because you've broken that link between the child and the parent's controller there of that property, that no longer is the case. So this will oftentimes results in um, very unexpected things or WTF moments where you're just like, why isn't this here where it should be, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Does, does that make sense? I mean, this is, could, does anybody else explain that better than I can? The no? The is getting created within the scope of where it's at. So when you type the second one, it's getting created on the child. It's right, the which then overwrites the previous inherited property of type in this instance. So um, with controller as though, right, and we showed in that previous example, um, we're always working off of an object that is your controller as name on scope. So you're never going to have that stepping on toes of a parent's scope properties that then get overwritten um, because you're explicit in what controller this property belongs to. Good there? If you use controller as, you don't have to worry about the dot rule. So don't, don't think about it, right? <coughs> uh, so another big reason um, is resisting the temptation of scope conveniences. So um, the idea here, right, is to break up a scope. We don't need it everywhere all the time. So make it the exception, not the rule. Um, makes you really think about using a scope watch, right? Like, can this be done in another way uh, via service or maybe an ng change uh, directive? And basically what you'll see is you're able to remove um, scope as a dependency in probably the majority of controllers. Because a lot of times you're just, you know, exposing functions or binding to the HTML with scope, um, anyways. So it cleans up your code a whole lot, and you don't see this magic scope flying everywhere. Which brings me to the next point of scope soup. Right? This kind of resolves that as well because you don't have scope. You're gonna have so little scope that even Carl Weathers won't be able to make a stew out of it. <laughs> for any Arrested Development fans out there. Um, <coughs> So moving towards the future of the web, right? This is kind of the bigger deal too. Everything is moving towards web components. So jump on board with Angular 1. Basically, um, <coughs> yeah, controllers, uh, the traditional sense, the traditional syntax um, is, is really not uh, moving forward anymore, right? Everything is going to be more JavaScript classes when it comes with ES6 and ES7. I'm sure Mike knows a whole lot more about that, and he'll talk more about that, maybe. We should have talked beforehand, <laughs> maybe. But um, yeah, right, React and Angular 2.0 are moving this direction as well. So you're preparing yourself for the future. Um, gotchas, for me. Uh, this was a big one, and I'm really embarrassed about it. So uh, form controller, right? Who's, everyone uses form controller for validation and all that good stuff. It makes it super easy. I spent a better part about two hours one day um, burning time trying to figure out how to get reference to this form controller that I'm creating in the controller as syntax, right? I was converting an old controller to use controller as, and the only thing that I couldn't get to work for me was the form. And honestly, it was just as simple as hanging my form name off of the controller as name that I was there. It's just nowhere in the documentation that I could find. Um, it's just one of those things that like is so intuitive after you realize it, but when you're trying to you know, start thinking about things differently and, and getting into the controller as way um, that totally got me. So um, just word of caution there. And I guess we can look at some more code here. But basically everything, right, just like any other scope properties or functions you're running with, uh, everything just gets namespaced off of that controller as now. So we've got essentially a, a temperature that we're selecting this thing to be brewed at. And 
that's what we've got. Basically, all this was going to show is that we've got an ng pattern that this uh, input has to be a number, right? So just to show that the form controller is working and doing what it's supposed to, um, if it's not a number typed into this input, we're not going to enable that button to be pressed. So. Um, so the other big one was scope watches, right? So we're talking about trying not to use these, but sometimes you just can't get away with, without bringing it in. So um, this is one of those two where it's just like, what? How do I, you know, whatever. So basically, temp's not going to work, right? Because that's not your controller as prefixed, right? If we're in our, our JS file, right, self, it was that var self is where I was hanging everything off of with a reference. Um, that's not going to work, right? Because that's not what we're actually watching. Um, so the way we get around this is little known thing. You can return uh, or have a function pass as the first parameter to a scope watch. So basically, you pass it a function and then return your property on your, your this object, um, whatever you've assigned that to be. In this case, it's self. So <coughs> if we open up an example here. Uh, we've got a, a number input in here and an ng switch. So basically, we've got some logic that, uh, if we look at this, we're watching the temp, which is the property that is ng modeled behind this uh, number input. And the idea is, is when we take that temperature over 200 degrees, you know, we're changing um, this self dot description. So when it's hot, we're showing this you know, different message. If it's normal coffee, yeah, it's just coffee. Or if we drop it down to you know, cold coffee, then we're showing um, the different span here. So you can still do watches with controller as. Don't freak out. So that's actually pretty much it. Um, Okay. Questions?